Hey guys! So, today we are going to talk about Wender Bundles. So let's get into it. Now, what is a Wender Bundle? Well, for those of you who do web development, depending on your experience levels with bundlers, such as Webpack, for example, it not, it's not just about Webpack, but it's pretty much about Webpack. No, oh, I'm sorry. If you use Rollup or something like ASM or something like you, you, whatever depend, like JavaScript loading system you want to use, that's fine. I use Webpack for the most part. It's my personal favorite. And in Webpack, you have this very nice concept called a bundle. Now, a bundle is just a way for you to package your JavaScript code and get a little bit of control over how much JavaScript you send over the wire. So imagine this. Imagine that you have your own code the stuff that you wrote you sell yourself personally. Now, for the most part, you will have a few dependencies, such as, say, React or Angular or something like that. Or maybe you're really retro and you do jQuery or prototype JS, or you do something different. Or maybe you're just using, say, Axios, some small library. Now, all of these things have one thing in common, and that is that you didn't write that code yourself. You are you are borrowing it or you're allowed to use it from some very nice developer somewhere else who's taking the time to write your software for you. So, what you then do is that you start sending that to your user, right? And you realize something. Damn, I'm getting a lot of these dependencies. There's a like. It's re if you really get down to it and you look at the file size of your JavaScript file that you're sending, it's pretty big. There's quite a lot going on there. So maybe there would be a nice way to kind of reduce the amount of stuff we send to the user. Because if you think about it, the better it's better for the user if you only send over what you really need to send to the user for the most part. And that's where caching comes into play. Well, caching in the browser works the same way you could expect in most caching situations. You have some type of file or data or something like that. You send that to the user, and then you simply set a header saying that, hey, browser, just cache this. Like, keep this file. This file doesn't change all that much. And then you're fine. Because if you told the browser that, hey, the file isn't going to change for a long time, then your user will just keep it all in, in their browser so they don't have to go to the network to get it every time they refresh your page, right? But then you realize that, hmm, every time I change my code, I'm going to update that cache or update, that file, update this file, and now my user gets everything sent down to me. Uh, oh, sorry, it, all that data gets sent over the wire again. And that's where Wender Bundles comes in. Because then you kind of realize that, hmm, wouldn't it be nice if I could split out the stuff that doesn't change all that much and just send exactly what is being changed? And for the most part, that's where the Wender Bundle comes into play. You see, what are the, like, for the most part, during the life course of your project, you're going to change your own code quite frequently. But your so called Wenders, or the people who provide you with these libraries and dependencies, I mean, it's not that often necessarily that you update your dependencies, depending on your project. So what you do is you split that out into a chunk, a separate piece of JavaScript that you don't send more than once, basically. So when the user first comes to your web page, you send two files, you send two JavaScript files. Just bear with me, I know. You're still sending them the same amount of data, but you're doing it over two network requests. Now, that's not ideal. It'd be great if you could do it in one. But the reason why this is a good trade-off is if you have a user who uses your site frequently, the second time they come to your site, everything's going to be norm everything's going to be in the cache, both your code and the vendor file. And then maybe it, you know, time passes, a few days, a few weeks, I don't know and you add, add a few new features to your code. Now the user comes back again. This time, your code has changed, 
but the vendor file, in other words, your dependencies, that hasn't changed. So now the browser only has to go and get your code, which is going to be much less code to send over the wire than if you send the whole thing. That's the idea of this. But there's always a but here. You have to be sure, and this is something I found the other day, I was very disappointed in this, it was that I had this, I had this awesome, awesome setup at work and I thought I was so clever. I packaged all my dependencies into this massive bundle, bundle file, right? And I sent that over the wire and then my boss comes in and we kind of talk and he explains that, oh yeah, great for this is, this is, it's great that you're thinking about performance, but you know, we change our dependencies quite a lot. And guys, I'm sorry to say this, and to all the server side people out there who hate JavaScript, this is one of those prejudices that you have that is absolutely correct. People change their dependency structures all the time. I actually, after I spoke to my boss, I actually felt like I kind of went, he can't be right. It can't be that often. And I went in and I checked the git history of my package JSON file at my job. And I saw that he was right. We change our, our dependency structures on average twice a month. That's insane. Insane. Which means for, as I explained, that means that our user has to use the application more than twice a month in order for that setup to have the vendor file to give them any type of benefit. And I go, oh, stupid Frederick, why didn't you check that? Because think about it this way. This means now that the vendor, like the idea is that the vendor file doesn't change and that you don't have to do two network, like you only do two network requests, which is worse, once. And then you just do one for changes in the code. That's the idea. But this is now false because you are changing the dependencies so often. So back to the drawing board drawing board so what do we do hmm and my boss i mean it's so obvious when he said it to me i did, I, I i i am ashamed somebody should take away my front end license because i completely forgot that we could do this so my boss says well frederick couldn't we just split out this really big stuff that all, never changes you why do you have to bundle all our dependencies maybe just bundle you know react and Redux, like that stuff that we almost, that is like really big, but we never change those specific, specific dependencies. Uh, of course, of course I should do that. So that's what I'm gonna do. And that's my tip to you guys. Really look if, uh, look at your dependency structure and just look at the history of that package JSON file you have. If you're changing that all the time, then your vendor file, like your vendor bundle, doesn't really help you much. But if that is the case, take a look at the really big libraries and see if those change less frequently. I mean, how often, like it's not that often you update Re React or Angular Review, so for example, and they're really big. So maybe even though you can't get the whole vendor file to inc include all your dependencies, at least you can extract the really big stuff. It's just a thought. Have a great day.